Hello and welcome to our comprehensive exploration of the Finnick Yellow Book 1999, where we delve into its crucial clauses that shape the landscape of construction contracts. Today, we're focusing on a series of key provisions, clauses 3.1 to 3.5, that are pivotal in understanding the roles, responsibilities, and processes in construction project management. In this session, we'll be dissecting the intricacies of Clause 3.1, which details the engineer's duties and authority, and how it establishes the foundation for the engineer's role within the project. We'll then navigate through Clause 3.2, exploring the nuances of delegating duties by the engineer, and the implications this has on the project's dynamics. Following this, we will look into Clause 3.3, which focuses on the engineer's instructions, a critical aspect of project execution and compliance. Additionally, we'll examine Clause 3.4, which addresses the replacement of the engineer, ensuring the continuity and integrity of the project. And finally, we'll unravel Clause 3.5, which guides the determination process by the engineer, a clause fundamental in resolving disagreements and ambiguities. Whether you are a professional in the construction industry, an engineering student, or someone with a keen interest in contract management, this discussion is designed to enhance your understanding and provide practical insights. Your engagement and questions are what make these discussions enriching, so we encourage your active participation. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated with our series on FIDIC contracts and more. If you find this content valuable, please like and share this video. Let's dive into the world of FIDIC contracts and uncover the essentials of successful project management. Clause 3.1 Engineers Duties and Authority FIDIC Yellow Book 1999 Purpose of Clause 3.1 Clause 3.1 is fundamental in defining the engineer's role within the construction contract. As the employer's agent for certain tasks, the engineer must navigate a complex landscape of responsibilities while upholding an impartial stance in decision-making. This clause lays the groundwork for understanding the engineer's dual-purpose role and their critical impact on the project's progress and outcome. Implications of Clause 3.1 The dual role of the engineer, acting both as an agent for the employer and an impartial decision-maker, can lead to potential conflicts of interest. These conflicts may influence project timelines and financial aspects, affecting both the contractor and the employer. Therefore, it's crucial to recognize the delicate balance the engineer must maintain to ensure equitable and efficient project progression. Key Considerations Under Clause 3.1 Appointment of the Engineer the selection of the engineer, made by the employer, is a critical early step in the project. The engineer's identity and reputation can significantly influence the contractor's approach to the contract. Authority of the engineer the engineer holds the power to issue directives and make consented judgments within the contract's scope. However, altering the contract itself is beyond the engineer's authority. Duty of fairness Maintaining impartiality is a cornerstone of the engineer's role. Balancing the interests of both the employer and the contractor is essential for fair decision-making. Instructions The engineer's directives are mandatory for the contractor, but there is provision for the contractor to seek written clarification or revocation of instructions. Determinations Decisions made by the engineer are binding, but can be contested through the Dispute Adjudication Board, dabbed by either party. Building on the earlier discussion of Clause 3.1 of the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999, let's delve deeper into the key aspects of this clause. This exploration further clarifies the balance of power and responsibilities among the engineer, the employer, and the contractor in a construction project. Key Aspects of Clause 3.1 Appointment and Competence of the Engineer The employer's responsibility to appoint a competent engineer is crucial. The engineer must possess the necessary qualifications and be supported by a skilled team. This ensures the effective oversight and management of the construction project. Limited authority to amend the contract. The engineer's inability to unilaterally change the contract upholds the agreement's sanctity. It ensures that contract modifications are a result of consensus among all involved parties, thereby preserving the contract's original terms and conditions. Exercise of authority. The engineer's authority as explicitly or implicitly stated in the contract is a key aspect of their role. However, this authority is sometimes contingent on the employer's approval. 
particularly for actions specified in the contract. Such a mechanism ensures that the engineer's decisions align with the employer's expectations and the contractual framework. Employer's approval. Situations where the engineer's decisions require the employer's consent are streamlined under the assumption of implicit approval. This approach facilitates quicker decision-making and project progression, provided it stays within the contractual boundaries, acting on behalf of the employer. When the engineer performs their duties or exercises their authority, they are essentially representing the employer. This reinforces the notion that the engineer's actions are in line with the employer's interests, further defining their role as the employer's agent. No relief of duties for parties. A vital aspect of this clause is that the engineer cannot absolve either the employer or the contractor from their respective contractual responsibilities. This emphasizes the importance of accountability and adherence to the agreed terms by all parties. Responsibility of the contractor. Despite the engineer's decisions or approvals, the contractor remains liable for fulfilling their obligations, including correcting any errors or omissions. This aspect underscores the contractor's responsibility to meet the project's standards and specifications, independent of the engineer's oversight. Interactions of Clause 3.1 with other clauses in FIDIC Yellow Book 1999 Understanding the interplay between Clause 3.1 and other clauses in the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999 is essential for a holistic view of the contract's operation. Clause 3.1, focusing on the engineer's duties and authority, is intricately connected to several other clauses, each interaction shaping the contract's implementation and management. Detailed Explanation of Interactions Guidance and Compliance Clause 3 One's designation of the engineer as a guide and compliance overseer, aligned with Clause 4.1, is fundamental to maintaining the project's adherence to its intended scope and quality. Financial Oversight In financial aspects, Clause 14.1, the engineer's role, as defined in Clause 3.1, is key in ensuring that payments are released only after proper validation of the work, maintaining the project's financial integrity. Claims and Disputes The engineer's impartiality and decision-making, crucial in Clause 20.1, are grounded in the authority given by Clause 3.1. This ensures fair and contract-compliant handling of claims. Variations and Amendments The interaction between Clauses 3.1 and 13.3 underscores a procedural approach to handling contract variations, ensuring changes are made within the established contractual parameters. Termination Decisions In potential termination scenarios, Clause 15.1, the engineer's assessments and reports, guided by their authority in Clause 3.1, provide vital information influencing such significant decisions. These interactions collectively shape the practical application of Clause 3.1, emphasizing the engineer's central role in the contract's execution and management. Detailed Explanation of the Flowchart Engineer's Role in Construction Project Management FIDIC Yellow Book 1999 Start, Project Initiation This marks the commencement of the construction project, setting the stage for all subsequent actions and decisions. Appointment of Engineer A critical step where the employer appoints the engineer. This appointment is foundational in establishing the management and oversight structure for the project. Define Engineer's Authority, Clause 3.1 The engineer's duties and limitations are defined as per Clause 3.1 of the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. This step involves delineating the scope of the engineer's authority, which is crucial for the roles they will play throughout the project. Review Project Requirements The engineer reviews and familiarizes themselves with the project's requirements. This step is essential for ensuring that the engineer's understanding is aligned with the contract specifications and expectations. Provide guidance to contractor. The engineer offers guidance to the contractor, directing them to ensure that the project execution aligns with the contractual terms. This guidance is vital for maintaining the project's adherence to its intended scope and quality. Oversee project execution. The engineer continuously oversees the project, ensuring compliance with the contract and maintaining the quality of work. 
This ongoing oversight is a key aspect of the engineer's role. Decision, need for variations? The engineer assesses the project to determine if there are any needs for variations or adjustments. This decision point is crucial for adapting the project to unforeseen challenges or changes in scope. Yes, propose variations. If variations are deemed necessary, the engineer proposes these changes, ensuring they are aligned with the project's objectives and contractual framework. Seek employer's approval for variations. The engineer seeks approval from the employer for any proposed variations. This step is essential for maintaining the contractual integrity and ensuring that all parties are in agreement with the changes. No variations needed. If no variations are needed, the engineer continues with the regular oversight of the project. Continue project oversight. The engineer continues the ongoing supervision and management of the project, ensuring that all aspects are progressing as planned. Assess contractor's claims. The engineer evaluates any claims made by the contractor. This involves a fair and impartial assessment to ensure that the claims are valid and in line with the contract. Issue certificates and approvals. Throughout the project life cycle, the engineer issues necessary certificates and approvals. These documents are crucial for various aspects of project management, including financial transactions, progress tracking, and compliance verification. Project completion. This stage marks the completion of the construction project, indicating that all contractual obligations have been fulfilled and the project objectives have been achieved. End of engineer's role. The engineer's role concludes with the completion of the project. This signifies the end of their active involvement and the fulfillment of their responsibilities as outlined in the contract. Detailed explanation of the sequence diagram. Managing construction projects under FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. Employer appoints engineer. The process begins with the employer appointing the engineer, as per Clause 3.1. This appointment is crucial as it establishes the engineer's role and authority for the project. Engineer provides guidance to contractor. Once appointed, the engineer provides guidance and instructions to the contractor, ensuring the project's execution aligns with the contractual terms. This step is pivotal for setting the project's operational direction. Contractor executes work and raises issues. The contractor then executes the work according to the engineer's guidance. During this phase, the contractor may encounter issues or concerns, which they communicate to the engineer for resolution or clarification. Engineer reports to employer. The engineer keeps the employer informed about the project's progress. This includes reporting on work execution and seeking approvals for any significant decisions or changes required in the project. Employer gives approvals and feedback. The employer responds to the engineer's reports with necessary approvals and feedback. This step is crucial for maintaining the employer's oversight and control over the project. Engineer communicates employer's decisions. The engineer communicates the employer's decisions and feedback to the contractor. This ensures that the contractor is aware of the employer's requirements and expectations, aligning their work accordingly. Contractor submits claims and requests. During the project, the contractor might submit claims or requests to the engineer. These could relate to project changes, delays, additional costs, or other contractual matters. Engineer assesses and responds to claims. The engineer assesses these claims and requests, responding in a manner that is consistent with the contractual terms. This step involves a fair and impartial evaluation to maintain project integrity. Engineer recommends actions on claims to employer. In some cases, the engineer might recommend specific actions or responses to the employer regarding the contractor's claims. This recommendation is based on their professional judgment and understanding of the contract. Employer makes final decisions. The employer makes the final decisions on these matters, based on the engineer's assessments and recommendations. These decisions are then communicated back to the contractor through the engineer. Engineer issues certificates and instructions. Throughout the project life cycle, the engineer issues necessary certificates and further instructions to the contractor. These documents are essential for various aspects of project management, including progress tracking and compliance verification. Contractor completes work. 
The contractor works towards completing the project as per the contractual terms and the engineer's instructions. Engineer confirms project completion to employer. Upon project completion, the engineer confirms this to the employer, signaling the end of the project's active phase. Having delved into the intricacies of Clause 3.1, which outlines the engineer's duties and authority, let's now shift our focus to another significant aspect of the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999 Clause 3.2. This clause addresses a critical element in project management, the delegation of duties by the engineer. Understanding Clause 3.2 is essential for comprehending how delegation works within the framework of a construction project, particularly the roles of assistants and the extent of their authority. Exploration of Clause 3.2, Delegation by the Engineer Overview of Clause 3.2 Clause 3.2 is designed to facilitate efficient project management by allowing the engineer to delegate specific duties and authority to assistants. This capability is vital in large-scale projects where a single engineer may not be able to oversee every detail personally. Key Components of Clause 3.2 Authority to Delegate The engineer is empowered to assign duties and delegate authority, which is crucial for managing complex tasks and ensuring specialized oversight in various project areas. Written Notification The clause mandates that any delegation or revocation of authority must be formally documented. This written notification requirement is key to ensuring clarity and official recognition of the delegation. Limitation on delegation A significant limitation is that the engineer cannot delegate the authority to make determinations under subclause 3.5, safeguarding critical decision-making processes. Qualifications of assistance Assistance must be suitably qualified and competent, ensuring that delegated tasks are handled by capable individuals. Language proficiency is also emphasized for effective communication. Extent of delegated authority. The scope of authority given to assistance is clearly defined, preventing any overreach and ensuring that actions are within the bounds of the contract. Effect of assistance actions. Actions by assistance within their delegated scope are considered as if performed by the engineer, providing continuity in project management. Limitations of assistance actions. There are specific checks in place, like the requirement for explicit approvals and the contractor's right to challenge assistance decisions, which add layers of accountability. Detailed explanation of Clause 3.2 Delegation dynamics Delegating responsibilities is a practical approach, especially in complex projects. It allows the engineer to distribute tasks and leverage the specialized expertise of various professionals, enhancing project management efficiency. Written notification the emphasis on written communication for any delegation or revocation ensures transparency and clarity. This formalization is crucial for all parties to acknowledge and adapt to the delegated authorities. Non-delegable authority. The restriction on delegating certain critical decision-making powers underscores the importance of the engineer's direct involvement in key decisions. This maintains a central oversight mechanism on crucial aspects of the project. Assistant qualifications. The requirement for assistance to be qualified and language proficient ensures they are adequately equipped to handle their responsibilities effectively, contributing positively to the project. Scope of authority. By clearly delineating the extent of delegated authority, the clause ensures that assistants operate within defined boundaries, maintaining the integrity and contractual compliance of the project. Validity of assistance actions. Treating actions by assistants within their delegated scope as equivalent to those by the engineer ensures continuity in authority and decision-making, facilitating smooth project progression. Checks and balances. The provision allowing the contractor to question an assistant's decisions adds a layer of accountability. This mechanism serves as a check against potential errors or overstepping by assistants, ensuring that all actions align with the project's objectives and contractual terms. Clause 3.2 Therefore, establishes a structured and effective framework for delegation within construction projects, balancing the need for distributed management with the necessity of maintaining centralized control and oversight. Diverse Interpretations of Clause 3.2 Delegation by the Engineer in FIDIC Yellow Book 1999 Purpose of Clause 3.2 Efficiency in Project Management The primary aim of Clause 3.2 is to enhance efficiency in project management. By allowing the engineer to delegate tasks, 
the project benefits from the specialized skills and attention of various experts. This delegation is especially crucial in large-scale projects where the engineer's direct oversight on every aspect is impractical. Maintaining project continuity. Delegation under Clause 3.2 also serves to maintain continuity in the project. By distributing tasks, the engineer ensures smooth progress without bottlenecks, vital for meeting project timelines and maintaining quality standards. Implications of Clause 3.2 Risk of diluted responsibility. One potential risk of delegation is the diffusion of responsibility. If not properly managed, this can lead to accountability issues, where it becomes unclear who holds responsibility for specific decisions or actions. Enhance specialization and expertise. On the positive side, delegation under Clause 3.2 allows for the involvement of specialized experts in the project. This can significantly improve the quality and precision of the work, leading to better project outcomes. Primary Aspects of Clause 3.2 Written Form of Delegation This aspect ensures that any delegation of duties is formalized and acknowledged by all involved parties, creating a clear and traceable record of authority distribution. Non-delegable core authority the clause maintains that the engineer retains core decision-making authority, especially for determinations under sub-clause 3.5. This ensures that critical decisions remain under the direct control of the engineer. Qualifications of assistance. The clause stipulates that assistance must be suitably qualified and competent, guaranteeing that delegated tasks are handled by capable and knowledgeable individuals. Define scope of authority. The scope of authority granted to assistance is explicitly defined, preventing overreach and ensuring the integrity of the engineer's overall authority in the project. Uses of Clause 3.2 Large-scale projects In complex and large-scale projects, Clause 3.2 is particularly useful as it allows the engineer to effectively manage the workload and concentrate on key aspects of the project. Specialized tasks for specific tasks that require specialized expertise, such as material testing or specialized inspections, the delegation of these responsibilities to qualified assistants can be highly beneficial. Interactions of Clause 3.2 with other clauses in FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. Clause 3.2, focusing on the delegation of duties by the engineer, has significant interactions with various other clauses in the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. Understanding these interactions is key to grasping how Clause 3.2 functions within the broader context of the contract. Key Interactions Interaction with Clause 3.5 Determinations Phraseology Clause 3.2 sets clear limits on the delegation of authority regarding determinations, which are covered under Clause 3.5. Shared Effect This interaction ensures that critical decision-making, particularly in determinations, remains directly under the engineer, maintaining a consistent and accountable decision-making process. Interaction with Clause 4.1 Contractors General Obligations Phraseology Assistance, operating under the delegated authority from Clause 3.2, may interact with the contractor in line with Clause 4.1. Shared Effect This facilitates effective communication and guidance to the contractor, ensuring their compliance with the contractual obligations and enhancing project efficiency. Interaction with Clause 14.1 Contract Price and Payment Phraseology Assistance may be involved in aspects related to payments as outlined in Clause 14.1, within their delegated scope. Shared Effect This enhances the monitoring and certification process of payments, contributing to the financial accuracy and transparency in the project. Interaction with Clause 20.1 Contractors Claims Phraseology Assistance under Clause 3.2 may initially handle the contractor's claims, as stated in Clause 20.1. Shared Effect Streamlines the initial assessment of claims, though final determinations are reserved for the engineer, ensuring authoritative and final decision-making. Detailed Explanation of Interactions Clause 3.5 Determinations The non-delegable aspect of Clause 3.2 regarding determinations as per Clause 3.5 is essential. This maintains the engineer's direct control over crucial decisions, ensuring the integrity and accountability of key project determinations. Clause 4.1 Contractors General Obligations Assistance under Clause 3.2 can issue instructions and guidance to the contractor, facilitating operational efficiency. 
This interaction is key in ensuring that the contractor adheres to the project requirements and the contract's stipulations. Clause 14.1 Contract Price and Payment In financial management, assistance involvement in overseeing payment-related aspects ensures thorough monitoring and verification, aligning with the requirements of Clause 14.1. This is crucial for maintaining financial control and transparency in the project. Clause 20.1 Contractors' Claims While initial handling of claims by assistance as per Clause 20.1 can streamline the process, the final authority and decision-making rest with the engineer. This balance is critical for efficient claim processing while ensuring that final decisions are made with the necessary authority and overview. These interactions demonstrate the interconnected nature of the clauses in the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999, especially how Clause 3. 2's provisions on delegation play a pivotal role in the contract's overall functioning and management. Detailed explanation of the flowchart. Delegation process under Clause 3.2 in FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. Start. Engineer assigns duties. The engineer initiates the delegation process by assigning specific duties to assistance and delegating authority. This step is crucial for distributing responsibilities among skilled individuals, ensuring efficient and specialized project management. Delegation to assistance. The engineer selects qualified assistance, like a resident engineer or independent inspectors, for the delegation. Importance. This facilitates specialized task management, such as inspection and testing, enhancing project effectiveness. Written assignment and delegation. The assignments and delegations are documented in a written format. Importance. Written documentation is vital as it formalizes the delegation and serves as an official record, eliminating ambiguities. Receipt by both parties. The written delegation is received by both the contractor and the engineer. This ensures transparency in the process and acknowledges the delegation by all parties involved. Delegation takes effect. The delegation becomes effective upon acknowledgement by both parties. This marks the start of the assistance roles and responsibilities under the delegation. Assistance qualifications. The qualifications, competence, and language proficiency of the assistants are confirmed. Ensures that the assistants are adequately equipped to handle their delegated responsibilities effectively. Extent of authority defined. The specific extent and limits of the authority delegated to each assistant are clearly defined. Provides clarity on the scope of decision-making power each assistant holds, preventing overreach. Acts by assistance as engineers acts. Actions taken within the scope of delegated authority are considered as if performed by the engineer. This legitimizes the assistance actions, ensuring their decisions are respected and upheld. Failure to disapprove is not approval. An assistance failure to disapprove work does not imply approval. Protects the engineer's right to reject work, plant, or materials at a later stage, maintaining quality control. Contractor questions assistance decision. The contractor can challenge any decision or instruction made by an assistant. Offers a channel for the contractor to seek clarification or contest decisions, ensuring fairness. Refer matter to engineer. In case of disputes, the matter is referred to the engineer for a final decision. Importance. Guarantees a higher level review and decision-making process, ensuring authoritative resolution. Engineer confirms, reverses or varies decision. The engineer assesses the disputed matter and makes a final decision, which could confirm, reverse, or vary the assistant's decision. Provides a definitive and authoritative resolution to the issue, ensuring project integrity. End of delegation process. The process concludes with the engineer's decision on the referred matter. Signifies the completion of a delegation cycle, resolving any issues or disputes raised by the contractor and maintaining project continuity. This flowchart outlines a comprehensive and structured approach to the delegation process under Clause 3.2 in the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. It highlights the importance of clear documentation, qualified personnel, and transparent decision-making mechanisms in effective project management. Here is another flowchart for better understanding this clause. Start. Engineer's need for delegation. The delegation process is initiated when the engineer identifies the necessity to delegate tasks. This is typically driven by the need for efficient project management and the effective distribution of workload. Identify tasks for delegation. The engineer assesses the project requirements and complexities to determine which tasks are suitable for delegation. This decision is critical for ensuring that the delegated tasks align with the project's needs and the assistant's expertise. Select qualified assistants. The engineer selects assistants based on their qualifications and competence. This step is crucial 
to ensure that the delegated tasks will be handled by individuals who have the requisite skills and knowledge. Define scope of delegation in writing. The engineer clearly outlines the scope of each assistant's delegated authority in a written format. This documentation is essential for providing clarity and precision about the extent and limits of the delegated authority. Issue written delegation to assistants. The formal written delegation is issued to the assistants. This document details their roles, responsibilities, and the scope of their authority, formally empowering them to carry out the delegated tasks. Receive acknowledgement from parties. Copies of the written delegation are provided to both the employer and the contractor for acknowledgement. This step formalizes the delegation process and ensures that all parties are informed and in agreement. Assistant begins task execution. With the delegation formalized, the assistant starts executing the tasks within their defined scope of authority. Decision is task within delegated scope? A critical decision point arises where it must be determined whether a particular task falls within the assistant's delegated authority. Assistant executes task if within scope. If the task is within the scope of the delegated authority, the assistant proceeds with its execution, applying their expertise and knowledge. Refer back to engineer if outside scope. Should the task fall outside the assistant's delegated scope, it is referred back to the engineer. The engineer then either handles it directly or provides further guidance. Engineer retains overarching control. Despite the delegation, the engineer maintains overarching control and oversight over all delegated tasks. This ensures that the project's objectives and quality standards are consistently met. Review and approve assistance work. The engineer periodically reviews and approves the work performed by the assistants. This step is vital for maintaining quality control and ensuring adherence to the project's requirements. End of delegation process. The delegation process concludes once the delegated tasks have been successfully completed and approved by the engineer. This marks the fulfillment of the delegated responsibilities and the closure of that particular delegation cycle. After exploring the nuances of Clause 3.2 and its impact on the delegation of duties by the engineer, let's now turn our attention to another critical aspect of the FIDIC Yellow Book, 1999 Clause 3.3. This clause, focusing on the instructions issued by the engineer, plays a vital role in the management and execution of the project. Understanding Clause 3.3 is essential for comprehending how the engineer's instructions guide and shape the project's progress. Purpose of Clause 3.3 Guidance and Direction The primary function of Clause 3.3 is to empower the engineer to provide instructions necessary for the execution of the works and the rectification of any defects. This ensures that the project is executed in line with the contractual requirements. Variation Management Clause 3.3 also addresses how instructions that lead to variations in the work are managed. This links directly to Clause 13 which covers variations and adjustments, thereby integrating the engineer's instructions within the larger project management scope. Implications of Clause 3.3 Authority and Compliance This clause establishes the engineer's authority to direct the project and mandates the contractor's compliance with these instructions. Scope of Instructions the engineer's instructions can encompass a wide array of aspects related to the project, from specific execution details to corrective actions for any defects. Variation Protocol When an instruction leads to a variation in the scope of work, it activates the procedures outlined in Clause 13. This ensures systematic management of any changes. Primary Aspects of Clause 3.3 Engineer's Authority to Issue Instructions The engineer has the authority to issue instructions throughout the project, a key aspect for effective project management. Source of instructions. Instructions to the contractor must come only from the engineer or a delegated assistant, centralizing the source of guidance. Written instructions. Ensuring that instructions are in writing provides a clear, formal record, essential for accountability and future reference. Compliance by the contractor. The contractor's obligation to comply with these instructions is a fundamental part of their contractual duties. Link to Variations Clause Instructions that lead to a variation are subject to the procedures in Clause 13, ensuring proper management of such changes. Uses of Clause 3.3 Project Execution Guiding the contractor in executing the work according to the contract. Defect Remediation 
directing the contractor on rectifying defects, handling variations, managing changes in project scope arising from the engineer's instructions. Clause 3.3 in the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999 is therefore integral to the project's success, providing a framework for the engineer's instructions and their implementation throughout the project lifecycle. Clause 3.3 in the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999 establishes the framework for instructions issued by the engineer to the contractor. This clause is crucial in directing the execution of the works, ensuring that the project adheres to the contractual specifications and quality standards. Key Components of Clause 3.3 Engineer's Authority to Issue Instructions The engineer is granted extensive authority to issue instructions for the execution of the works and the correction of any defects. This authority is central to the engineer's role in guiding the project. Source of Instructions the contractor is required to follow instructions only from the engineer or an assistant who has been delegated authority. This ensures that the instructions are centralized and authoritative. Written format of instructions. All instructions from the engineer must be provided in writing. This requirement is vital for ensuring clarity, preventing misunderstandings, and maintaining a formal record. Contractor's obligation to comply. The contractor must comply with the engineer's instructions, which is a fundamental part of their contractual obligations. This compliance is essential for the orderly execution of the project. Variation Management Instructions that lead to a variation in the works fall under the scope of Clause 13. This aspect ensures that any changes to the original scope of work are managed systematically and in accordance with the contract. Process Flow within Clause 3.3 Identification of Need the process starts when the engineer identifies a need for specific instructions related to the project's execution or the remediation of defects. Issuance of instructions. The engineer issues the required instructions in writing to the contractor. Contractor's reception and compliance. Upon receiving these instructions, the contractor is obligated to comply and implement them as part of their contractual duties. Handling variations. If an instruction results in a variation, the procedures outlined in Clause 13 are initiated. This process manages changes systematically and ensures they are properly documented and executed. Applicability of Clause 3.3 Throughout the project lifecycle, Clause 3.3 is relevant at any stage of the project, providing the engineer with the means to guide or correct the contractor's work whenever necessary. In response to defects, the engineer utilizes this clause to issue instructions for remedial actions when defects are identified in the works. When variations arise, if the engineer's instructions lead to a change in the original scope of work, the clause works in conjunction with Clause 13. This integration ensures that variations are handled appropriately, maintaining the project's integrity and alignment with contractual agreements. Key Interactions of Clause 3.3 with Other Clauses in FIDIC Yellow Book 1999 Interaction with Clause 13 Variations and Adjustments Phraseology If an instruction constitutes a variation, Clause 13 shall apply. Clause 13 Variations and Adjustments The application of Clause 13 in response to the engineer's instructions that alter the work scope is critical. It ensures that any variations are processed with due consideration to documentation, evaluation, and compensation, thus maintaining the contract's overall framework and fairness. Interaction with Clause 4.1 Contractor's General Obligations Phraseology The contractor shall comply with the instructions given by the engineer. Clause 4.1 Contractor's General Obligations the interaction with Clause 4.1 is pivotal as it embeds the engineer's instructions within the contractor's fundamental contractual duties. This relationship is essential for the contractor to carry out the work in accordance with the project's specifications and directions from the engineer. Interaction with Clause 3.5 Determinations Phraseology Instructions may lead to situations requiring determinations under Clause 3.5. Clause 3.5 Determinations When instructions lead to situations necessitating determinations, be it for technical, financial, or scheduling aspects, Clause 3.5's role becomes significant. 
it ensures that such determinations are made with the engineer's authority, providing a clear resolution path. Interaction with Clause 20.1 Contractor's Claims Phraseology Instructions leading to additional costs or time may result in claims under Clause 20.1. Clause 20.1 Contractor's Claims This interaction is crucial in safeguarding the contractor's interests. When the engineer's instructions have financial or time-related implications, Clause 20.1 provides a formal avenue for the contractor to seek compensation or extension, thereby recognizing and addressing the additional burdens placed on them. Detailed explanation of the flowchart. Implementing Clause 3.3 instructions in FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. Start. Need for instruction identified. The process initiates when the engineer recognizes the necessity to issue an instruction. This could be for executing specific works or addressing and remedying defects. This step is crucial as it triggers the mechanism for necessary adjustments or corrections in the project execution. Engineer issues written instruction. The engineer formulates the required instruction and issues it in writing to the contractor. The written format ensures clarity, provides a formal record, and prevents misunderstandings. Decision. Is instruction a variation? A key decision point arises to determine if the instruction leads to a variation in the project's scope. This decision is pivotal as it dictates whether the instruction follows the standard compliance route or triggers Clause 13 for variations. Yes, apply Clause 13 for variations. If the instruction constitutes a variation, Clause 13, Variations and Adjustments, as applied. This entails a systematic approach to manage the change, potentially adjusting the contract terms, scope, and price. No, contractor complies with instruction. If the instruction does not lead to a variation, the contractor proceeds to comply with the instruction as issued. Compliance without the need for variation maintains the project's original scope and timeline. Manage variation process, if applicable. The process of managing the variation, as dictated by Clause 13, commences. This step ensures that any changes to the project are documented, cost evaluated, and formally agreed upon. Work execution or defect remediation. The contractor then executes the work or remedies the defects as per the engineer's instruction. This is where the practical application of the instruction takes place, directly impacting the project's progress. Variation implemented in project, if applicable. If a variation was involved, this step sees its implementation into the project. This ensures that all changes are integrated into the project, with adjustments made to the scope and possibly the contract price. Project continues as per contract. Following the execution of the instruction or the implementation of the variation, the project continues in alignment with the contract terms. This step signifies the resumption of normal project operations post-instruction, ensuring the project remains on track. Here is another flowchart for better understanding of this clause. Start. Engineer issues an instruction. The process initiates with the engineer issuing an instruction related to the execution of the works. This is a critical directive that the contractor needs to understand and implement effectively. Contractor receives instruction. Upon receiving the instruction, the contractor assesses its implications. This assessment is essential for understanding the nature, scope, and impact of the instruction on the project. Does it lead to additional costs or delays? The contractor evaluates if the instruction results in extra costs or project delays. Decision point. This evaluation is a crucial decision point in determining the contractor's next steps. Yes Pat. Contractor gives notice of claim. If additional costs or delays are anticipated, the contractor formally notifies the engineer of a claim. This notice is an official request for compensation or an extension of the project timeline due to the instruction's implications. No Pat. Contractor proceeds as instructed. If there are no additional costs or delays, the contractor proceeds to implement the instruction as directed. Compliance without claims keeps the project on its original course. Engineer has 42 days to respond. After receiving the claim notice, the engineer has a typical period of 42 days to respond. This period allows the engineer to thoroughly review and assess the claim's validity and implications. Engineer's response. The engineer formulates and provides a formal response to the contractor's claim. 
Decision point. This response is another critical decision point in the flowchart. Agrees with contractor. Adjustments made to contract. If the engineer agrees with the claim, the contract is adjusted accordingly. This may involve compensation for additional costs or an extension of the project timeline, acknowledging the impact of the instruction. Disagrees with contractor. Instruction remains unchanged. If the engineer disagrees with the claim, the original instruction remains unchanged. The contractor is expected to continue with the initial instruction, with no alterations to the contract. Detailed explanation of the sequence diagram. Engineer's written instructions in FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. Engineer issues written instructions. The process begins with the engineer issuing written instructions to the contractor, either for executing specific works or addressing defects. This step is critical for directing the project's execution in line with contractual obligations and quality standards. Contractor acknowledges receipt. The contractor acknowledges receipt of these instructions, ensuring they have been received and understood. Significance. Acknowledgement is essential for confirming that the contractor is aware of and understands the new directives. Request for clarification, if needed. If the contractor requires further understanding, they request clarification from the engineer. This step prevents misinterpretations and ensures that the contractor precisely understands the instructions. Engineer provides clarification. The engineer responds with the necessary clarification to the contractor. Providing clarification ensures that the instructions are executed as intended, maintaining the project's integrity. Contractor implements instructions. The contractor proceeds to implement the instructions as directed. This is where the instruction materializes into action, directly affecting the project's progress. Engineer monitors implementation. The engineer monitors the implementation of their instructions for compliance and quality. Monitoring ensures that the work aligns with the instruction and meets the project's standards. Contractor reports completion. Upon completing the task, the contractor reports this completion to the engineer. Reporting completion allows for an official evaluation and acknowledgement of the work done. Engineer informs employer. The engineer informs the employer about the implementation of the instruction and any significant outcomes. Keeping the employer informed maintains transparency and allows for higher level oversight. Employer provides feedback. The employer reviews the information and provides feedback or additional directives. The employer's feedback is crucial for guiding future actions and ensuring the project's objectives are met. Relaying employer's feedback. The engineer relays the employer's feedback to the contractor. This step ensures that the contractor is aware of the employer's perspective and any additional requirements. Adjustments as per feedback. The contractor makes necessary adjustments to the work based on the employer's feedback. Adjustments ensure that the final output meets all contractual and quality requirements. Engineer approves final work. The engineer reviews and approves the final work after adjustments. Approval from the engineer signifies that the work meets the required standards and instructions. Contractor submits work for final approval. The contractor submits the completed work to the employer for final approval. This submission is the final step in validating the work against the project's requirements. Employer confirms project completion. The employer confirms the completion of the project or the specific task. This confirmation marks the end of the sequence, indicating that the task or project meets all contractual obligations and standards. Having explored the key aspects of Clause 3.3, which outlines the engineer's authority to issue instructions, let's now shift our focus to Clause 3.4 of the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. Clause 3.4 addresses a critical and sometimes inevitable aspect of construction projects, the replacement of the engineer. Understanding this clause is essential for comprehending how such transitions are managed within the contractual framework, ensuring minimal disruption to the project while maintaining its integrity. Purpose of Clause 3.4. Facilitating smooth transition. Clause 3.4 addresses the replacement of the engineer in a construction project. Its primary aim is to ensure that such a transition is managed smoothly, thereby minimizing any potential disruptions to the ongoing project. Maintaining Project Integrity The clause is structured to preserve the project's integrity and continuity, despite the change in a key management role. Implications of Clause 3.4 Advance Notice Requirement 
The clause mandates that the employer provides a 42-day notice period before the engineer's replacement. This period is crucial for allowing all parties to make necessary adjustments and preparations. Contractor's right to object. It grants the contractor the right to raise objections against the proposed replacement. This provision ensures that the new engineer is acceptable to all parties involved and maintains a harmonious working relationship. Key Components of Clause 3.4 Notice of Replacement The employer must issue a 42-day notice to the contractor, specifying details about the new engineer, including their name, address, and relevant experience. Details of the new engineer the notice must contain comprehensive information about the new engineer to inform the contractor adequately. Contractor's right to object. The contractor is empowered to object to the engineer's replacement on reasonable grounds, which must be backed by specific particulars. Employer's obligation to consider objections. The employer has a duty to consider the contractor's objections before finalizing the decision on the replacement. Process flow within Clause 3.4. Employer's decision to replace engineer. The process initiates with the employer's decision to replace the current engineer. Issuance of notice. The employer issues a detailed notice to the contractor about the intended replacement, including the changeover date. Contractor's evaluation. The contractor evaluates the qualifications and suitability of the proposed new engineer. Raising objections. If any, the contractor, upon finding reasonable grounds, can object to the replacement, providing detailed reasons. Employer's consideration of objections. The employer assesses the contractor's objections to decide whether to proceed with the replacement or reconsider the decision. Applicability of Clause 3.4. During project life cycle. Clause 3.4 is applicable at any point in the project's life cycle when there is a need or decision to replace the engineer. In case of disputes or dissatisfaction. This clause becomes particularly relevant in scenarios where the employer is dissatisfied with the current engineer or if disputes arise that warrant a change in the project's engineering leadership. Clause 3.4, which deals with the replacement of the engineer in a construction project, has important interactions with several other clauses in the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. These interactions are essential to understand the broader implications of such a change on the overall project management and execution. Interaction with Clause 3.1 Engineer's Duties and Authority Replacement of the engineer impacts the execution of duties as outlined in Clause 3.1. This interaction ensures continuity in the execution of the engineer's roles and responsibilities, even after a replacement. It underscores the need for a seamless transition to uphold the project's progress and standards. Clause 3.1 Engineer's Duties and Authority The new engineer, as per Clause 3.4, is required to assume the duties and responsibilities outlined in Clause 3.1. This interaction is vital for ensuring that there is no disruption in the project management and that the new engineer is fully equipped to take over the role. Interaction with Clause 4.1 Contractor's General Obligations The contractor's obligations may be subject to reinterpretation under a new engineer as per Clause 4.1. It highlights the importance of maintaining the contractor's adherence to project requirements, regardless of the change in the engineer. This interaction ensures that the project's objectives remain consistent. Clause 4.1 Contractor's General Obligations this interaction ensures that the contractor continues to fulfill their general obligations under the contract, even with the change in the engineer. It is crucial for the continuity and consistency of the contractor's work. Interaction with Clause 13 Variations and Adjustments A new engineer may bring different perspectives on variations, affecting the application of Clause 13. This interaction can significantly influence how variations and adjustments are proposed, evaluated, and implemented, based on the new engineer's perspective and approach. Clause 13 Variations and Adjustments The introduction of a new engineer may bring fresh perspectives to project variations, thus impacting the application of Clause 13. This interaction could lead to different approaches in managing project scope changes, potentially affecting cost and timeline. Interaction with Clause 20.1 Contractors Claims Changes in engineer could lead to new claims or disputes under Clause 
The replacement of the engineer might result in new interpretations or resolutions of claims and disputes. This interaction recognizes the potential for changes in how claims are handled and resolved. Clause 20.1 Contractors Claims With the change in engineer, there may be new dynamics in the interpretation and resolution of claims. The contractor might raise new claims, particularly those related to the transition period or the new engineer's decisions, as covered under Clause 20.1. Overall, the interactions of Clause 3.4 with other clauses in the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999 highlight the comprehensive impact a change in the engineer can have on various aspects of project management. It underscores the importance of a well-managed transition process to maintain project continuity and contractual compliance. Detailed explanation of the flowchart. Process of replacing the engineer as per Clause 3.4 in FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. Start. Decision to replace engineer. The process is initiated when the employer decides to replace the current engineer. This decision is critical and may be based on various factors, such as performance issues, disagreements, or the need for different expertise. Employer prepares replacement notice. The employer prepares a formal notice of replacement, detailing the new engineer's name, address, qualifications, and the intended date of replacement. This preparation is key to ensuring a transparent and informed transition process. Issue 42-Day Advance Notice to Contractor The employer issues a 42-day advance notice to the contractor. This notice period allows the contractor to prepare for the change and ensures that the transition does not disrupt the ongoing project. Decision Contractor raises objections? The contractor assesses the proposed new engineer and decides whether to raise any objections. This decision point is crucial for the contractor to express concerns about the suitability of the new engineer. Contractor submits objections, if any. If the contractor has reasonable objections, they formally submit these to the employer, supported by specific details. The submission of objections allows for addressing potential issues with the proposed engineer, maintaining the project's interests. Employer reviews objections. The employer reviews the objections to assess their validity. This review is essential for ensuring that the concerns raised by the contractor are given due consideration. Outcome of Objection Review If objections are valid, the employer may reconsider and select an alternative engineer. If objections are not valid or no objections raised, the initial replacement choice is confirmed. The outcome determines whether the replacement process proceeds as initially planned or requires modification. New Engineer Appointed the new engineer, either the initial choice or an alternative, is formally appointed. The formal appointment marks the official change in the project's engineering leadership. New engineer assumes duties. The new engineer takes over the responsibilities and duties of the project. This step is pivotal for the continuation of project management under new guidance. Project continues with new engineer. The project proceeds under the supervision of the new engineer. The smooth continuation of the project with the new engineer is crucial for maintaining project momentum and meeting contractual obligations. This flowchart illustrates the structured procedure for replacing the engineer as outlined in Clause 3.4 of the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. It emphasizes the importance of a methodical approach, ensuring that the transition is managed effectively without compromising the project's progress or integrity. Detailed Explanation of the Sequence Diagram Replacement of the engineer as per Clause 3.4 in FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. Employer notifies of engineer replacement. The sequence begins with the employer notifying the contractor of their intention to replace the current engineer, including details of the new engineer. This notification is crucial for maintaining transparency and preparing all parties for the transition. Contractor receives notification. The contractor receives the replacement notification and starts to assess the suitability of the proposed new engineer. This step is essential for the contractor to understand the potential impact of the change on the project. Contractor raises objections, if any. If the contractor has reasonable objections to the proposed replacement, they communicate these concerns to the employer. This opportunity allows the contractor to express any concerns about the new engineer's qualifications or suitability. Employer reviews objections. The employer reviews the contractor's objections to determine their validity and relevance. The review process ensures that the contractor's concerns are considered, maintaining a collaborative project environment. Employer confirms or revises replacement decision. Based on the objection review, the employer either confirms the decision to appoint the new engineer or revises it if the objections are valid. 
This decision affects the continuity and leadership of the project, underscoring the importance of a suitable engineer. Employer appoints new engineer. Once the decision is finalized, the employer formally appoints the new engineer. The formal appointment marks the official transition to new project leadership. New engineer assumes role and communicates. The new engineer assumes their role and begins communication with the contractor. Effective communication is key to ensuring a smooth transition and maintaining project momentum. Contractor acknowledges new engineer. The contractor acknowledges the new engineer, preparing to receive and implement instructions. Acknowledgement is vital for operational continuity and adherence to the new engineer's guidance. New engineer issues instructions. The new engineer starts issuing instructions to guide the continuation of the project. These instructions are crucial for maintaining the project's direction under the new leadership. Contractor complies with instructions. The contractor complies with the instructions from the new engineer. Compliance ensures the project progresses according to the contractual obligations and the new engineer's directives. New engineer reports on project progress. The new engineer keeps the employer informed about ongoing project progress. Regular progress reports are essential for the employer to monitor project health and make informed decisions. Employer provides feedback. The employer reviews the project's progress and provides feedback or additional directives. Employer feedback is important for adjusting strategies and ensuring the project meets the desired objectives. New engineer relays employer's feedback. The new engineer communicates the employer's feedback to the contractor. Relaying this feedback ensures that the contractor aligns their work with the employer's expectations and requirements. This sequence diagram illustrates the structured process involved in replacing the engineer as outlined in Clause 3.4 of the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. It underscores the importance of clear communication, proper evaluation, and collaborative decision-making in ensuring the project's seamless continuation under new leadership. As we conclude our discussion on Clause 3.4, which adeptly handles the replacement of the engineer, we have gained insights into the importance of a seamless transition in leadership roles and how it can affect the dynamics of a construction project. The structured approach outlined in Clause 3.4 is crucial for maintaining the project's momentum and upholding contractual integrity during such transitions. Now, let's turn our attention to the final clause in this section of our exploration, Clause 3.5 of the Fittick Yellow Book 1999. This clause plays a pivotal role in the decision-making process within construction contracts and offers a nuanced approach to resolving disputes and ambiguities. Clause 3.5, centered around the engineer's role in making determinations, is instrumental in navigating complex project scenarios. It provides a framework for fair decision-making, especially in situations where consensus is challenging to achieve. Let's delve into the functionalities and implications of this crucial clause. Purpose of Clause 3.5 Facilitating consensus and fair resolution, Clause 3.5 guides the process of making determinations on various matters requiring the engineer's decision within the contract. Its primary aim is to ensure decisions are made fairly and impartially, prioritizing mutual agreement between the parties. Maintaining contractual integrity, this clause upholds the integrity of the contract by offering a structured method to resolve ambiguities or disagreements, ensuring that the contract's terms are consistently applied and respected. Implications of Clause 3.5 Consultation Requirement The engineer must consult with both the employer and the contractor, highlighting the importance of collaboration and transparency in reaching an agreement. Engineer's Determination If consensus is not achieved, the engineer is responsible for making a fair and impartial determination, taking into account all relevant circumstances. Notification and documentation, the engineer must notify both parties of their determination, providing detailed reasons to maintain transparency and for record-keeping purposes. Key Components of Clause 3.5 Consultation Process the engineer is required to consult with both parties in an attempt to reach an agreement on the issue at hand. Engineer's fair determination, in the absence of consensus, the engineer must make a determination based on fairness and in accordance with the contract's terms. Notice of determination, the engineer must formally notify both parties of their decision, including supporting details. Effectiveness of determination, 
the determination is effective and binding unless it is later revised under the dispute resolution procedures outlined in Clause 20. Process Flow Within Clause 3.5 Identification of matter for determination The process starts when an issue arises requiring the engineer's determination. Engineer's consultation with parties The engineer consults with both the employer and the contractor to try to reach a consensus. Attempt to reach agreement the parties engage in discussions, aiming for a mutual agreement on the matter. Engineer's determination, if no agreement if no agreement is reached, the engineer makes a fair determination, considering all relevant factors. Notification to parties, the engineer notifies both parties of the determination, along with supporting particulars. Implementation of determination, the determination is implemented and followed by both parties, unless it is contested under Clause 20. Applicability of Clause 3.5 Throughout the project lifecycle, this clause is applicable at any time during the project when a matter arises that necessitates the engineer's determination. In dispute situations, Clause 3.5 is particularly relevant in situations where there is disagreement or ambiguity that cannot be resolved through direct agreement between the parties. It serves as a critical mechanism for dispute resolution, ensuring that all decisions are made fairly and in line with the contract's provisions. Clause 3.5 in the Fittich Yellow Book 1999 thus plays a crucial role in the decision-making process of a construction project, providing a balanced and structured approach to resolving complex issues and ensuring contractual compliance. Interactions of Clause 3.5 with other clauses in Fittich Yellow Book 1999. Clause 3.5, which delineates the process for the engineer's determinations, significantly interacts with various clauses in the Fittich Yellow Book 1999. These interactions are vital for comprehending how these determinations are embedded within the broader contractual context. Key Interactions Interaction with Clause 3.1 Engineer's Duties and Authority Phraseology Determinations under Clause 3.5 are an extension of the engineer's duties outlined in Clause 3.1. This ensures that the engineer's determinations align with their overarching duties and authority, reinforcing the consistency and validity of their decisions within the project's framework. The determinations made by the engineer under Clause 3.5 are integral to their broader role as defined in Clause 3.1. This interaction ensures that the engineer's decisions are within their authorized purview, lending credibility and authority to their determinations. Interaction with Clause 4.1 Contractors' General Obligations Phraseology the contractor's obligations may be influenced by determinations made under Clause 3.5. It ensures that the contractor's responsibilities and actions are in accordance with the outcomes of the engineer's determinations, thereby maintaining contractual compliance. The interaction with Clause 4.1 ensures that the contractor aligns their work with the engineer's determinations. This is crucial for the smooth progression of the project, accommodating any necessary adjustments while adhering to the contract. Interaction with Clause 13 Variations and Adjustments Phraseology Determinations related to variations fall under the purview of both Clause 3.5 and Clause 13. This facilitates the integration of the determination process with the management of project variations, influencing project scope, cost, and execution. Determinations that result in project variations are linked with Clause 13, ensuring that any changes are systematically managed. This connection is vital for maintaining project coherence and ensuring that variations are appropriately documented and executed. Interaction with Clause 20 Claims, Disputes and Arbitration Phraseology Disagreements over determinations can be addressed through the dispute resolution mechanisms in Clause 20 provides a structured approach for resolving any disputes arising from the engineer's determinations, promoting fairness and adherence to contractual processes. When there are disagreements regarding the engineer's determinations, Clause 20 provides a resolution path. This is essential for maintaining contractual harmony, allowing for an impartial resolution process in the event of disputes. In summary, 
The interactions of Clause 3.5 with other clauses in the Fittick Yellow Book 1999 illustrate its crucial role in decision-making processes and dispute resolution within construction projects. These interactions ensure that determinations are made and implemented cohesively, respecting the contractual framework and the party's interests. Detailed explanation of the flowchart, process of engineer's determination as per Clause 3.5 in Fittick Yellow Book, 1999. Start, matter requiring determination identified. The process is initiated when an issue arises in the project that requires the engineer's determination. This could be due to a disagreement or ambiguity. Identifying the need for a determination is crucial for addressing issues that cannot be resolved through regular project operations. Engineer consults both parties. The engineer engages with both the employer and the contractor to discuss the matter and attempts to reach a mutual agreement. This consultation emphasizes the importance of collaboration and transparency in decision-making processes. Decision, is agreement reached? a critical decision point where it is determined if the parties have managed to reach an agreement. Reaching an agreement can swiftly resolve the issue without the need for a formal determination. Yes, implement agreed decision. If an agreement is reached, the decision is implemented as per the consensus of all involved parties. Implementing an agreed decision promotes harmony and cooperation in the project execution. No, engineer makes fair determination. In the absence of an agreement, the engineer makes a fair and impartial determination, considering the contract terms and all relevant circumstances. The engineer's fair determination is key in resolving the issue impartially, based on their professional judgment and the contractual framework. Engineer issues notice of determination. The engineer formally notifies both parties of their determination, along with supporting details. Providing a written notice ensures clarity, transparency, and serves as a record for future reference. Decision, is determination disputed? Another decision point arises to check if either party disputes the engineer's determination. This step determines whether the issue is resolved or if further dispute resolution procedures are needed. Yes, refer to Clause 20 for dispute resolution. If there is a dispute over the determination, the matter is referred to the dispute resolution processes outlined in Clause 20. This referral to Clause 20 ensures that disputes are handled in a structured, formal manner. No, implement engineer's determination. If there is no dispute, the engineer's determination is implemented as final. Implementing the determination signifies the resolution of the issue and allows the project to move forward. Continue project execution. The project continues, following either the agreed decision, the engineer's determination, or after resolving the dispute. Continuation of the project execution ensures that the project progresses despite the challenges encountered, maintaining its momentum and adherence to the contract. This flowchart provides a systematic view of the process for the engineer's determination under Clause 3.5 in the Fittick Yellow Book, 1999. It highlights the structured approach to resolving project issues, ensuring fairness and adherence to contractual terms. Detailed explanation of the sequence diagram, engineer's determination process as per Clause 3.5 in Fittick Yellow Book 1999. Engineer consults employer and contractor. The sequence starts with the engineer consulting both the employer and the contractor regarding a matter that requires a determination. This consultation is crucial for ensuring that all parties have an opportunity to present their views and contribute to a collaborative decision-making process. Employer and contractor provide input. The employer and the contractor provide their input, opinions, or perspectives on the matter at hand. Gathering input from both parties is essential for a balanced understanding of the issue, allowing the engineer to consider all sides of the situation. Engineer attempts to reach agreement. The engineer tries to facilitate an agreement between the employer and the contractor based on the inputs received. This step highlights the engineer's role as a mediator, striving to find a mutually acceptable solution to avoid unilateral determinations. 
Responses to agreement attempt. The employer and the contractor respond to the engineer's attempt to broker an agreement. The responses from both parties indicate whether there is a possibility of reaching a consensus or if further steps are needed. Engineer issues determination if no agreement. If an agreement is not reached, the engineer proceeds to make a fair and impartial determination, considering all relevant factors and the terms of the contract. The engineer's determination is crucial in resolving the issue fairly when mutual agreement is not feasible. Employer and contractor acknowledge or dispute determination. Both parties either acknowledge the engineer's determination or raise disputes against it. This step determines whether the engineer's decision is accepted or if there is a need for further dispute resolution. Engineer finalizes determination. Based on the party's responses, the engineer finalizes the determination. If there is a dispute, it may lead to dispute resolution procedures as outlined in Clause 20. Finalizing the determination signifies the resolution of the issue either through acceptance or by moving to formal dispute resolution mechanisms. Continuation of project execution. The project continues following the final determination or the outcomes of any subsequent dispute resolution process. The continuation of the project ensures that despite the issues encountered, the project's progression and objectives remain on track. This sequence diagram provides a detailed view of the process surrounding the engineer's determination under Clause 3.5 in the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. It highlights the importance of consultation, fair decision-making, and the resolution of disputes, ensuring that project issues are handled effectively and in accordance with the contract. As we conclude our in-depth exploration of the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999, particularly focusing on the vital clauses 3.1 to 3.5. I hope this journey through the realms of the engineer's duties and authority, delegation of duties, instructions of the engineer, replacement of the engineer, and determinations has been enlightening. Each of these clauses plays a pivotal role in shaping the landscape of construction contracts and project management. Your participation and engagement in this series have been invaluable. If you found these discussions insightful, and you wish to continue enhancing your understanding of construction contracts and other complex topics, please consider subscribing to our channel. Your subscription is a powerful way to stay connected and informed with our latest content. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to hit the like button. Your likes help us gauge the impact of our content and reach more people who could benefit from these discussions. Sharing your thoughts in the comments section and sharing this video with peers and colleagues can also foster a broader community of learning and discussion. Thank you for joining us in uncovering the complexities of the Finnick Yellow Book 1999. Remember, each clause, each provision we've discussed is a step towards mastering the art of effective project management in the construction industry. Stay tuned for more insightful content, and let's continue to grow and learn together.